and welcome to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. Today coming to you from the Crown Princess here in Liverpool. As usual, we have one of our travel experts with us today to answer all your questions. And don't forget, if there is a particular question you have for us, here's a good way to get in touch. Our website is www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. Just click on programmes, select the clinic page and submit your question to us online through the website. If you want to email us directly, you can do that also to clinic at holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk or by some traditional methods through the post to the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Waterloo, Liverpool, L22 5NG. Well, I'm pleased to say that Bob Dixon is with me today, one of our regular travel experts. Bob, welcome along to the Crown Princess. What a fantastic place to bring the programme from today. Uh, I was just saying that my introduction to cruising was on the QE2. Now, no better introduction to cruising, I suppose, although we only did it for a little day visit. It was a fascinating thing to do at the time, but my word, how things have changed since then. Oh, definitely. The, um, uh, the QE2, she was an iconic ship. She was with us for just over 40 years. Um, but she, of course, you've got to remember, was a liner. She was built to go through uh, um, uh, oceans and heavy seas, whereas cruise ships nowadays are built for calmer waters like the Caribbean or the Mediterranean. Um, and the big difference is that on the QE2, it was really only the very top suites um, uh, and, and the, 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 the highest grade cabins that had balconies. On this ship, for example, about three quarters of the cabins had balconies, sort of 800 83 cabins I think with balconies so it makes balcony affordable luxury for everyone but it does mean that the ships are sort of slightly more boxy possibly than the QE2 was. The Crown Princess makes a fantastic looking sight when you arrive at the pierhead and as you say it's uh, a lot more accessible now for people because as you say you know, the cabins uh, are facing the ocean now so more people uh, can have uh, a view that looks out rather than in the old days perhaps so therefore enjoying the same kind of luxury as people who paid an awful lot of money in the old days would have done. Yeah that's true but it, it, it doesn't just stop with the cabins. The, uh, all the facilities on the, on the ships they're built to really uh, appeal to a very broad um, tranche of society so to all age groups so we've got amazing kids facilities that you wouldn't have seen on a 40 year old ship. We've got you know, all sorts of dining venues, dancing venues, entertainment venues so the, the, whereas in the past a ship was really exactly that, this is a ship but also a resort at sea um, with all manner of um, uh, facilities and um, entertainment um, really designed to, 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 to appeal to a very broad spectrum of people um, and it means for the, their holiday there's something that they want to do. They don't have to fit in with some shipboard routine, whatever it is that they, they like doing it'll be on board. Well, and there is a huge range of things to do, and I think somebody has been uh, part of the design uh, of this and another craft have actually been out looking for good ideas to implement on the ship, haven't they? Because I've seen some brilliant ones that I would have never have thought of. Oh yes, that's true. We we have teams uh, in the states. So I think they spend a lot of time in Vegas. They possibly spend a lot of time in Florida, and they're seeing, you know, w what are the attractions that that, that are um, uh, appealing to, to to families, to couples, to single travellers, and how many of those can we realistically replicate at sea? Um, and you know they're, they're, they're following trends but really bang up to the moment these are very very contemporary ships and although they're built to, to last 25-30 years the um, uh, the onboard facilities and, and, and entertainment is always being revamped every year with you know changing little things here to keep it fresh to keep it uh, um, contemporary and appealing to today's traveller one of my favourite ideas so far that I've seen on board today has been the movies under the stars. Really great idea. You can sit in on deck in your lounger with your, your rug and a cup of coffee or a cocktail or something and watch a film. Yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, you can do that during the day. The screen is that bright, so you can be sitting in the Caribbean watching James Bond. Uh, or you can be under a balmy Caribbean or Mediterranean sky um, with a rug um, around you and a, and a big box of popcorn. You can do it in the evening as well. It's a fantastic facility and very, very popular. As well as that, uh, you could spend, I don't know what the average cruise length that people do, is it two weeks like a, a, a seaside holiday or is that different as well? The, the, the average, the mathematical average is around about 12 days, so typically it's either 7, 10 or 14 nice itineraries. Yeah. I'm only saying that because it would take me that length of time to find my way around. Yes, well, I mean, that, <laughs> um, uh, passengers do sort of spend the first you know, day or so being a little bit bewildered, <laughs> ending up at the wrong end of the ship, but that's part of the fun, you know, it's, it's like staying in a holiday resort, you don't want to, to, to to know it all within five minutes of being there. So, um, you know, 
getting to know the ship and understand where everything is, that, that's all part of the holiday. And as well as, uh, as uh, you know, efficient signposting and, uh, and, and directions for where to go for your meal and to the attractions, you've got some very friendly people who are here on board to make your stay just that much better. Yes, and they are very, very experienced and at the first sign of bewilderment, <laughs> they will see that someone is possibly <laughs> heading in the wrong direction and they can help them. They, 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 they don't just wait to be asked, they, they proactively go out and, and, and help. And the, the crews, I have to say on all the cruise ships, are, uh, are, are, are trained to be attentive, to always look out, you know, how can I help, how can I improve the customer's experience, how can I make their holiday 10% you know, better, um, and, and they're really, really good at that. And I tell you what, it's easy to see us when we're bewildered because we go around with a particular expression on our faces and people just come over to us and they say, you look like you need to be shown where to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it was that, or you look like you need something to eat. That's another popular one. <laughs> okay, so um, the, ca the cabins have changed. You know, the state rooms are, uh, are very different now. Are, are they as, as, as good as a five-star hotel, for example? They certainly look like they are from the outside. Oh, I think so. I mean, all the facilities that you would expect um, in a, in a five-star hotel, you'll find in a cabin. You've got mini bars. You've got TVs, uh, beds, sofas. Um, fully equipped bathrooms, everything that, that you would expect um, in a five-star hotel. And, and even like the, the technology, so for example, you can uh, use your uh, in-cabin TV screen to check your, um, your, your cruise account. You know, how much money has my wife been spending in the spa? Now, how much money did I win on the casino last night? There's all, all these kinds of things. Um, and you can also use them to order photographs online, and so it's, it's a massive interactive technology. And I would say in some cases, actually more than you would get in, um, in many top-grade hotels. Yes, it's fantastic to see. So the, the, even though the, the ships have changed and uh, are, are very much more uh, all-inclusive for people, the standards have not dropped or, or changed at all. Oh, the standards are always getting better. You know, there's, there's, there's a byword that is, it's better to, to improve 1% in 100 areas than 100% in one area. And this is a constant thing. We have committees of people shoreside sitting, how can we improve the experience? What, what can we do to make it even more enjoyable for, for the passenger? How can we train the crew to be even more attentive? Um, and this is, this is one of the great things about cruising, that uh, really the, the, the most strenuous thing you should have to do is stir your gin and tonic, you know, because we, we, we are always working to find ways to to make your holiday an ever more effortless um, and pleasant experience. Okay, Bob, we'll talk some more in a moment, but uh, Bob Dixon is my guest here on the Crown Princess in Liverpool. And if you're interested in going on cruising, we have produced a very uh, excellent little brochure here for first time cruisers. I think in the trade we say people who have yet to cruise. And if you want one, here's the phone number 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks and mobiles may vary, but a very useful document and some excellent questions in there which will help you a lot. We'll take a quick break now, but join us back on The Crown Princess in just a few moments. Welcome back to the Holiday and Cruise Clinic. I'm Phil Hilton and we're here on The Crown Princess in Liverpool today. Don't forget we have our regular travel experts with us each and every day, so if there's a question you have for them, here's a good way to get in touch. Our website is www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. Just click on Programmes, select the clinic page and submit your question to us online. If you want to email us directly, it's clinic at holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk or by post to the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Waterloo, Liverpool, L22 5NG. And we produced this really useful document here, all you ever wanted to know about cruising, but we're too afraid to ask if you're a first timer, someone who's yet to cruise, really useful, some excellent questions in there. It's yours free of charge, available if you just call this number now. 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. I'm sure you'll find it useful. One person who doesn't need that is our travel expert, Bob Dixon, who's with us today on board the Crown Princess. Bob, it's, it's not unusual to see a cruise ship in Liverpool these days, is it? No, um, there are more and more cruise ships doing um, round Britain itineraries, um, and they go into typically uh, Scotland, Edinburgh, and you're always, always assured of a very warm welcome in, in Liverpool, and it's great to be here today. How are the European tours and including places in the UK going then? How are the bookings going? Is there a significant demand for people who want to go around the UK? 
Um, it is uh, um, actually for on, on on a princess ship. Typically, you've got American customers and customers from all around the world. But um, P and O do um, uh, round Britain cruises too, uh, as do Cunard, and they're always always popular. It's interesting how many people want to go around their own country and see those little pockets and those, those small areas that maybe they wouldn't get to visit in, in a normal course of events. So very very popular indeed. Yes, it's a little bit like a staycation, isn't it? But you're not quite staying at home, but you're enjoying your country. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. The, the, the great thing is on one of the international brands, you can then, um, I don't know, get off and see Edinburgh during the Edinburgh Festival and then come on and share the jokes with Italians and Americans and French people. So it's a very, very um, uh, cosmopolitan, offshore mix of people. Yeah. Itinerary is the biggest thing, really, isn't it, when considering a cruise holiday? And there are so many to choose from now. Yeah, there are. I mean, all the cruise lines offer um, itineraries all over the globe. Um, and I suppose it's one of those things you just tick them off as you go through. Every year you do another one. The, the, the very popular ones for first-time cruises are 14-night Mediterraneans, where typically you'd go to eight or nine ports and have um, three or four sea days. Um, and also the, the, uh, the Baltics, the, the, the fjords and the Caribbean. And then for more connoisseurs, you've got Alaska and then the world cruises. So um, it's a big old world to explore. Absolutely. I was wondering whether you specifically mention the Mediterranean for first time cruises. Is because for people who are used to going to Spain for a uh, around the pool holiday, it might not be that, it might just be a little bit different, but not quite as different. Well, Phil, have you been in Britain for the last five summers? Okay, <laughs> have you ever seen the sun during that time? Okay, so yes, it, it's, it's. I mean, there's guaranteed sunshine. The the difference is, um, yes, you're not just around a pool. You know, you're, you're not in a resort. You're going into into some of the most historic and and, and culturally diverse cities um, in the Mediterranean. And you can choose to stay on the ship, or you can go off and do the, some of the amazing tours, the wine tasting, the 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 the, the, the architectural, the cultural tours, um, everything you can do or stay and chill out. And that's the big difference between that and a sort of a, a, a club hotel where the pure focus is on kind of pool and beach. Now, a little bit more about the itineraries. What, what can be next for the cruise itinerary? Surely you've got them all boxed off now. Well, yes. I mean, the um, the world is, is uh, having just said how big it is. I mean, the, the, like for, for uh, uh, um, the world cruises, they will spend three months uh, during the winter, so for, typically from January to the end of March or, be, or beginning of April, um, traveling around the world. They go to a lot of you know, far eastern ports, very exotic ports. Um, we get pretty much most places covered, and there are even some specialist cruise lines that use icebreakers, right? So they can get to you know, parts of the, the Arctic or the Antarctic where really there is no other way to get there. So I would say pretty much we have the world uh, covered. Obviously, there are environmental concerns, so we don't want too many ships going into certain places but um, the cruise lines are all very conscious of this um, and, and we basically want to take to the people to where they want to go but then not everybody knows that they want to go to some other places so like up the Amazon Manaus what a fantastic place right but you've you've really got to say you know, did you know this was available and that's I think what we do with the itineraries and and and, uh, and the brochures and we bring these places alive and tempt people to go to some some, some exotic um, ports and destinations they may not have considered the first time around. I think that's a key point Bob because if you're sitting at home with your brochure or you're looking online to find out what's available an important factor to consider is also the time of year when you want to take your holiday as well isn't it? Yeah absolutely so the cruise ships due to sort of uh, um, uh, geographical and, and, and weather reasons can't go everywhere all year round so for example you will not go get to Alaska in December nor really will you get to the Baltics uh, in December it's, it's, it's cold so there are certain months so if you're looking to go to the fjords or the baltics typically between uh, may and august uh, ditto for alaska um, the caribbean is pretty much all year round uh, it gets a little bit choppy sort of around the august <laughs> august september time um, and uh, the the world cruises tend to travel um, basically during the the, the, the british winter um, january through to to april um, and the Mediterranean is sort of it's, it's quite long, sort of April through to October, November. There, there are some um, cruise lines that are there all year round. And then you've got the Atlantic Islands. Again, that's a pretty safe bet. Most uh, year round, you'll, um, you'll get some nice weather there. So if you're organised and you've got a bit of money to spare, you could actually cruise all year round, couldn't you? Yes, you could indeed. In fact, there are people who spend their lives on cruise ships. You know, either one ship or they get off one and move on to the other. And what, what, what a fantastic way to retire. Um, and if you look at the cost of doing that, actually, it is not a lavish way to live. It is a hugely cost-effective way to live, and um, you get to see some fantastic places, and you're always meeting new people. 
with all this knowledge that you've built up over the years of, of cruising, when you come to retirement then, Bob, is that something you're going to consider? Um, that's a few <laughs> years off yet, Phil, I'm happy to say, so yes. All right, remain undisclosed for now. Okay. What about um, the next big thing in cruising? Obviously, it's grown tremendously over the past few years. Can that growth be sustained? And if so, what's next? Oh, I think so. I mean, we, we perceive the world, Phil, I think you may have heard me say this before. There are people who cruise, and there are people who are yet to cruise. There is no such thing as a non-cruiser. You will cruise at some stage. Um, and I, th I, th I think, w w really, there are, rather than sort of try and reinvent the wheel, um, we want to bring the, 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 the existing cruise programs to people who are initially still a little bit sceptical, they're, um, they're a little bit unsure whether it's for them or not. They don't need to be in time, I think, one, once they've had a look in the brochures, once they've, they've come on a, on a ship show around, like today, when the ship's in Liverpool or Southampton, you know, come on board and have a look. Um, your travel agent can, can help arrange that. Um, uh, that is, I think, where, where the expansion is going to come. But then every time we build a new ship, we are looking to the future. We are looking to, to uh, provide a, um, a holiday for a, or a contemporary holiday experience. So the ships are ever evolving. You know, no, no new ship looks anything like the one before it. No, not at all. Well, that's a really interesting point, Bob. And I was going to say to uh, everybody at home that do take up, on, not quite Bob's offer, but go to your travel agent and find out about coming on board for the day and experiencing a little snippet of what you can have through your travel agent, because it is absolutely fantastic to see what's available. I can say that from personal experience. So looking ahead, we've got some exciting things to look forward to in cruising. And also, it's a lot more, um, I can, you know, there's a difference between exclusivity and inclusivity, isn't there? Um, but you've got more family orientated cruising now. So uh, as a change from mum and dad and the kids going to Spain for, a, uh, as we say, for a pool holiday, come on board cruising and, and never look back. Well, here's an example of why it's really important to talk to your travel agent, um, because uh, they will advise you which ship is better for you. So there are some ships that are tailored towards uh, couples and uh, um, uh, older clientele that are in fact child-free, and there are others that are tailored um, to children. And that, you know, the, 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 the tailoring takes the form of um, what kids' facilities are there, what are the dining options for families, you know, is it all uh, formal dining, you know, is that fun to do for families with small kids? Probably not, but there are family dining alternatives. So, um, it, it, absolutely, expert advice uh, is, is, is key here, and your travel agent is the best place to go for that. Yeah, absolutely, because the choice is overwhelming, really, isn't it, now? Yes, I mean, there are, in the Princess uh, fleet alone, there are 16 ships. Uh, they, you know, all, all the, the cruise lines, Royal Caribbean and, and Holland America and Carnival, they're all um, got double-digit fleets, and uh, across the world, I don't know, there are several hundred, uh, and the the choice can be mind-boggling, so to help you with that and to, 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 to help you make the right choice, as I say, um, you know, choose, a, choose a, a, a cruise specialist travel agent. Sure, but not, not just the cruise specialist or the company organising, but once you're on board the ship, each individual ship, there is a huge amount of choice as well. Yes, I mean, there's, there's loads of choice on every ship. Every ship has its own character and its own flavour. But um, this is one of the, the, the fun things of the first two days on board, getting, getting to understand where everything is and, and what your options are. Research is always good, though, because uh, often you'll find that um, some of the speciality restaurants, especially if they are uh, endorsed by a celebrity chef, someone like Marco Pierre White or, 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 uh, or similar, um, they are often, they book up very, very early. So if you've only found out about it on day two of your holiday, you could find actually that a lot of these venues are already block booked for the rest of the cruise. So it really does um, pay to, to invest that little bit of time in research to find exactly what there is to do on board. And then, and then you can look forward to doing it. So, you know, the holiday experience is spread out over, you know, the, the preceding weeks as well. Okay, well, ju just to finish then, Bob, we've decided we're gonna go on a cruise. We want to go and book it. What's the best way? Do we go to the travel agents? Do we, do we get a brochure? Do we look online? How do we, what's the best way? Absolutely. Unless you know exactly what you want, go to a travel agent because uh, you could say that um, an hour spent in a travel agent will probably spend you, it's probably save you a week of doing your own research. Um, and they, they know what would be the best ship tailored to, to your individual needs and desires and preferences. So definitely say go to your travel agent every time. Brilliant, Bob. Some very useful information, as always. Thank you very much indeed, and for entertaining us here today as well. Pleasure. And if you have a question for Bob or any of our travel experts, here's how to get in touch. Our website, www.holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk. 
click on programs, select the clinic page and submit your question to us online. Email us directly, clinic at holidayandcruisechannel.co.uk or by post to the Holiday and Cruise Channel, Cavendish House, Brighton Road, Waterloo, Liverpool, L22 5NG. And we produced this really useful document. All you ever wanted to know about cruising but were too afraid to ask is yours free of charge if you call this number 0871 423 4444. Calls cost 10p a minute from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks and mobiles may vary. Really useful document, some excellent questions in there. I'm sure you'll find it very useful. Well, that's all we've got time for from the Crown Princess here in Liverpool. Until next time on the Holiday and Cruise Clinic, from myself, Phil Hilton, bye for now.